Hey, yeah, it's me. Hey, it's Joel. <laughs> this, this is the Creality CR30, or otherwise known as Naomi Wu's 3D print mill. We got this out of the box and we got it printing on a live stream not too long ago. We've got a couple prints since then and I've had some conversations with Naomi and I've had some conversations with Carl, Knack 3D, and we've got some things figured out. This is a test Benchy, there's other prints over here. I just, I wanna give you a little update since the stream. I think it's a good idea. I think we should do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. As you can see, it's still here on my desk. Not, have, not much has changed. We did the stream on a Saturday and it's now Sunday evening. So really not a lot has changed. Since the stream though, I've added these rollers right here. These allow prints to kind of roll off and be supported. I've also tightened up the stepper motors here and here. I kind of got them a little bit closer to the frame because the belts were a little loose. And what was the other thing? Oh, these rollers right here. And on the other side, the eccentric nuts need to be turned just a little bit, just to tighten it up, just to get everything squared away. And do you know this Benchy right here, this was done for uh, Mr. Pomeroy. He purchased this off the stream, so this is his. We showed that up close. It's not bad, but uh, Carl, Naomi, Bill Steele, they all said this machine is very much capable of doing better. Before I left for the evening from the stream and Sydney and I went home to get ice cream, I was chatting with Naomi and she said, why don't you just print the I-beam before you go? Just let it print overnight and then you can check on it the next day. I thought that was a good idea. This is it right here. And look at that. <laughs> Look at that, isn't that fantastic? It's a, little, it's a little furry. Let's move the camera and let's get a closer look. So here it is, this is the I-beam. There's a little indentation right here and I did stop the print before it finished. Remember, it's printing at that angle, <laughs> that angle right there. A couple things to consider. So this, it has a, a very distinct pattern on it and also this, um, the belt is stitched together in this massive diagonal pattern and it kind of picked up that pattern in the print. There we go. You can see parts of the bed come off at the point where it is stitched together. And I don't know if it's supposed to, but it could be that with such immense stitch lines, maybe there's just too much there. Maybe it needs to be smaller zigzags. I don't know. I mean, it's stuck to it just fine but it took some of it with it. And that's possibly a no-no. You can see that white spot right there. That's where the, the I-beam was. And so the I-beam discolored it. And you can kind of see right there, there's a little bit of that stitch work that has popped up. That's not part of the model, that's part of the stitch work. Uh, the, the fuzziness here, that's slicer settings. I can take care of that. That's not a big deal. What I'm more worried about is this right here. I think I know what happened. This is a really long print. And so as it gets to the end of the bed, right there, there's a cooling zone where the bed isn't heated and that's to prepare it to release a little bit early. And then what it's supposed to do, you can kind of tell right here, it's a little bit lower. And what it's supposed to do is encourage it to separate so that it can then be prepared to go onto the roller. I think because this bed material, whatever it is, I think because things stick so well to it, I think as it was printing, it started to lift just a little bit. It started to lift because it was stuck and that's what created that slight little indent and then eventually it gave way and it started going off just like that and so it was able to print normally. And so what I think happened was the nozzle was too close to the bed and it was pushing the plastic really far into the bed, causing it to stick too much. Here's how I fixed it. I don't know if fix is the right word, but what I did was adjust this end stop. So this part right here goes down and hits an optical sensor. The optical sensor is connected via these four bolts, screws, sorry. And then this screw right here is almost like a set screw. So what I did was loosen these up and then I could adjust the distance that the piece here had to travel into the optical sensor. So then what I did is I made the optical sensor go up just a little bit that way, which means this got in its path sooner, 
resulting in the nozzle being just a little bit higher than the print bed. And in doing that, uh, it was able to lay plastic down and not adhere to the bed so hard. So now we have a test benchy. Let's see how well it comes off the bed. Here's what's going on right here. Uh, first, let's get off this little prime line. Let's see if I can't scrape that off. I don't want that to go underneath. Come on. Oh, there we go. I just want to be able to pick it up and I'm not gonna be able to do this. Okay, good. You can see that the benchy wiggles a little bit and I can indent that, that bed material. So I think it's possible that the bed might be a little too loose. I don't know. I don't know exactly how loose it should be, but here we go. We're about to see the benchy come off. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And there we go. And just like that, the benchy's off. And now it's just going to be stuck there. <laughs> Scraping against the bed. Let's pick this up and let's go get a closer look. Here's the benchy. I think it looks pretty darn good. So I talked with Carl, Mac 3 d and he gave me settings for Black Belt Cura, but he also gave me, set, uh, gave me sliced files, G-code for this benchy. And he said this was sliced for his machine. And so this is a little bit of support material. I can break that right off. Look at that. That is uh, dimpled. And it gets that from the build plate or the build ribbon, the build track. <laughs> I guess you can't really call it a build plate anymore. There's the back. You can see the lettering and stuff, uh, a little bit difficult. And because the, the print lines are in that direction, that's, that's an overhang. That's an overhang right there. It's just, oh, it's just crazy to think. So the smokestack, I think it looks, it looks good. I think it could look better, but there's an overhang here and that's like a top layer. It's just, it's just weird. That is a decent Benchy. I, I know it's not perfect, but again, we're dealing with a brand new machine and untuned materials. And you know what? I think it looks, I think it looks okay. So, so far, what have we learned? Well, we've learned that we don't know what the belt is made of still, and it might be a little bit looser than it should be. We've learned that once you sturdy up some things, it's gonna get a little bit better print quality. And then once you talk to Carl and get some sliced files from him, you're going to get even better quality. Things hopefully don't stick too much. And it could be that if the belt is too loose, maybe it's giving it uh, the ability to pop up. The texture on the bottom is so crazy weird. I wish you could feel it yourselves. The place where the belt is spliced right here does come off on the model. And we'll have to kind of do some experiments to see if that happens with other models, but I mean, I have that, and I have this Benchy, and uh, this one goes to Joey Pomeroy. <laughs> well, cool, well, there we go. Th that's the update since the stream. Don't worry, we're gonna do a lot of printing with this. I'd love to hear requests. I'd love to hear what y you think it should print. Uh, we'll give it lots of tries. I know Naomi had said that she and Creality are hoping to keep this under $1,000 US when it comes to Kickstarter. I think she was trying to aim for 800. I don't know if that's still true. We'll see when the Kickstarter comes out. It is going to be November, I think, when the Kickstarter comes out. It is a Kickstarter, so it's, you know, tread with caution. <laughs> but I think that with Naomi at the helm here, there's a reason this is called Naomi Woo's 3D print mill, I think her goal is to make this the best quality machine that Creality has put out. And then with the funds from Kickstarter, manufacture and make it 100% open source so that we have all sorts of belt printers out there in six to 18 months. I think it's a great goal, quite honestly. I'm gonna load another model on this and we're gonna get to printing. Thanks for coming along on this little informational journey. I hope, uh, I hope you learned something. I can't wait to hear what you want printed on this thing and we'll see you in the next one. Hug each other more and from a safe distance, high five.